The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. Well, thank you for giving me some time to talk about ACI's online programs this afternoon. I'm going to be talking about uh, the four main online programs that we have, giving you some descriptions so you'll know what's out there. Uh, we call them our web sessions program, webinars, which I'm sure you're familiar with. And we have what we call our online CEU program and ACI e-learning. And finally, I'll give you uh, just a few minutes about uh, the future plans, some things you might uh, see coming, what I think is going to happen with online education at ACI and, and some a little bit in general start off with our web sessions program. Web, se web sessions are just recorded presentations, usually from the ACI convention. So you're actually sitting in on the presentation of a, or the uh, development of a web session right now. There's screen recording software running on the, the Podium laptop that's recording what you see on the screen. There's an audio feed into the computer. It's recording my voice on the same file. We'll take those files back. Uh, Claire will uh, put them in, uh, take them back to the office, and we'll uh, divide them up, uh, do a little bit of editing, and then we'll put them online uh, so that people can see them. And really, this uh, the web session program was started to give people a, a bigger audience for our convention presentations. I'm sure you've been, you know, sitting in a committee meeting perhaps, or sitting in one session when you knew that a, a really good session was going on someplace else, um, and then the one that that always kind of bothers me is, you know, not everybody who presents at ACI is a is an instructor or does presentations a lot. So you can tell that some people, you know, it's a lot of work for them to put together a 20 or 30 minute presentation, and then they happen to get, you know, the afternoon Wednesday spot, and you walk by and there's 10 people sitting in there, and it's a great presentation, but you know, it's it's just at a bad time. So uh, that's the whole idea, really, is to give. The, the great information that we can get at our ACI convention sessions, a wider audience. The web sessions are available on the ACI website. If you haven't been uh, out to ACI to check out the new website lately, uh, I'd encourage you to go look around. They're, they're posted, you can get to them on our website, or ACI has a YouTube channel, and they actually run through a YouTube player on our website. Uh, if you subscribe to the ACI channel on the ACI website, or on the YouTube, website, you can actually get a notification every time we put up a new uh, presentation. What we do from between, um, you know, about a month after this convention to about a month after the next convention is each week we have a few featured presentations, which are the new ones that we put up on the website. So, um, you know, uh, there may be two, maybe three presentations from a session that we'll put up. Then the next week, they'll move to our past web sessions page, and they're basically archived on that page. So on our past web sessions page, if I brought it up here, you'd see you could go back to the Minneapolis convention and look through the sessions that were done there, the ones that we recorded, look at the titles. You could flip open the title. You could see which presentations we had recorded. So if you remember um, a session from back in Minneapolis or back in Phoenix, that you would like a colleague to see, or perhaps you'd like to see again, or you didn't get to see at that time, you can go in there and find it uh, by, by looking through the list of sessions. Um, the new search utility on the ACI website will also bring up a list of free web sessions, so that's a good way to find them as well. And we're working on getting a, a search function that will work just on the web sessions page added to the website as well. So uh, this is a, an example. If I had searched on uh, historic concrete, you can see it brings up uh, five free web sessions. I could click on there and take me to another spot on the page where those would be listed, and I could see which ones I wanted to watch. 
And they're also very uh, portable. That's me uh, watching it on a, an iPad, sitting at my desk. Uh, they're great. They play great in YouTube, which is, uh, which is a major advantage of putting it up there. And they play on all sorts of mobile devices. Uh, it's a really good format, really good size. You can put your headphones in if you're at a, a spot where you, you can't really have the speakers around. Moving on to the webinars, we're uh, doing two different types, really. Uh, first one I call an introductory webinar, and those are usually about an hour to an hour and a half. Usually the topic is a, a new document that's coming up or uh, a document that's just been re-released by a committee. And we've typically let people watch the live version of these webinars for free. Uh, if you want to get a continuing education certificate, we run you through an e-learning course where you take a class about the webinar or take a quiz about the webinar and it automatically gives you a certificate, record your uh, completion of the course. Um, if we get the speaker's permission, we record the presentation. And in that same e-learning course that you went into to take a quiz and get the, the certificate, we'll put a copy of the, or a link to a recording of the webinar in that course. So the course kind of morphs over time um, and becomes an on-demand webinar. So even if I didn't know when the live webinar was going on, um, I can go back and find it later on and basically watch a recording of it, take a quiz. Some of the topics we've done are uh, tolerance compatibility, uh, internal curing, uh, attesting of structural elements. Uh, there was a protocol, a document that had a protocol for testing structural elements in a lab. We did a webinar on that that was fairly successful. And then, of course, we'll have uh, a 318-14 organization. The presentation that's being done uh, Wednesday uh, by Dr. Poston with 318 is going to be broadcast as a webinar. And we're also going to be looking at more uh, in-depth type webinars. Uh, these would be ones that would be done over multiple sessions, you know, one and a half hours, two hours at a time probably, multiple days. Uh, because of the, the amount of time it takes in to putting these together, they'll be fee-based. Uh, again, you'll be able to get a certificate for attendance by running through the e-learning courses. And again, if we can record those, we'll put those up as on-demand webinars. And some of the topics we're looking at doing are anchors to concrete, uh, mass concrete, and of course, design in accordance with 318.14 once we get closer to uh, its release. Our online CEU program was developed as a, a really simple way for engineers to get their professional development hours. Okay. The way it works is there's a set of reference, uh, a reference material that, we'll, um, that we put up for the course. And at the beginning of the life of this program, which was probably seven or eight years ago, it was mainly just documents that we put up. A lot of our repair application procedure documents were used, and you would, we put together enough reference material to take about a 45 minutes to an hour to study, um, and we combine that with an online exam that you could take. Uh, lately, the reference material we've been branching out, we have, uh, could be a web session that we recorded that we let you watch and then take a quiz over. Uh, it could also be, uh, we have a couple of audio books could be a portion of an audio book, a portion of a technical document, um, any of those sorts of things. And if you pass the exam with at least an 80%, you're emailed a certificate of completion. Um, a lot of people don't know that ACI members get to go in and take eight of these courses per year um, with their membership. So uh, you're, it restarts as soon as you pay your membership again. And uh, if you go through your eight free, or if you're not a member, you can go in and get them for $25 a piece. You can take the re retake the exams uh, as often as you need to. Uh, we group the topics. So there are topics, uh, uh, courses on materials, design, construction, repair specs. Those basically mirror our uh, educational committees. Um, we keep the new. 
Uh, the ones we put out, we put the new ones out there so you can keep track of maybe which ones you've done before. The new ones are out there for about a year under that logo. Or you can just browse through all of them. Uh, we have a little over 50 that are up there now, 50 different topics for the exams. And uh, one kind of unexpected benefit of this and another program is that these can be used by professors and students pretty easily. Um, I don't know how many of you know, but uh, students can get a free ACI membership. And with that membership, they also get the, the eight exams that they can go in and take for free. So what some professors have been doing, say for a materials class, is they've been assigning these online CU program courses as pretty simple homework, right? You can get your students used to going out to, to ACI to get information. Uh, they read the information, take the exam, and they can bring the certificate back to you as proof that they, they've completed the exam. Uh, if you stop by our booth, which is down by the bookstore, um, in the, the registration area or the exhibit area, there's, a, there's a, an article that was written about that, uh, kind of a case study. And you can pick up that article. It's sitting on the desk there. Um, the ACI e-learning courses, now these are kind of uh, what I would call kind of the cream of the crop. These are the funnest courses that I think we put together. Uh, they're SCORM-based, and SCORM is uh, kind of a protocol that allows the course to talk to a learning management system so it can tell you stuff about the behavior of the person who was uh, involved in the course. You know, it might tell you how long they stayed uh, and how long they stayed in the course at a particular time, um, how they answered different quiz questions, what their quiz score was. That's mainly what we get out so we can then, uh, in our learning management system, <coughs> record whether they passed the, the final exam that was in the course, and we can give them a certificate. And what makes these so nice is that they're, they're very interactive. In most cases, even to proceed to the next screen, the, the user has to, has to interact, if, if nothing else, just by pushing a button to go to the next page. But it, it doesn't allow them really to sit back and just let the, let the information keep coming to them. They actually sort of have to participate in the course to different levels. Um, another great thing is basically any format that can be delivered electronically can be used in these courses. So we'll make animations. Uh, I don't have it running now, but that the top lift of this uh, flowable fill, that starts out uh, down at the lower, the level of the bottom lift, and then there's a narration that plays as that lift goes up. It talks about how the pressure on the wall increases. We've also done uh, uh, in our Concrete Basics course, I believe, uh, we have one that kind of uh, shows segregation and bleeding, uh, you know, where the, the water kind of ra raises to the top in a concrete mixture. Um, you can use, obviously, video, just audio, um, really any sort of uh, format you can use in, your, uh, in these courses. Uh, the, another nice thing is that the user can go along at their own pace. You know, they're turning the pages or flipping the screens. They can go back and read or listen to stuff at any time that they want to. Uh, kind of going along with the self-pace, they can go through the course in any order that they want to. They can skip lesson one if they're not interested in it and go straight to lesson three, for example. Um, we do a fair amount of checkpoint quizzes is what we call them where we'll go through you know, a, a few screens of the course, and then we'll have a little quiz over uh, you know, a key concept that we wanted to make sure that people were getting just, just so they kind of realize what's coming up. Then we have an exam, as we, you know, as we have to do, to give them a certificate. Um, what we try to do with the exams is base the questions on the, the 10 most important things that we would like the user to get out of the course. You know, we kind of use it as our, our last opportunity to get our point across. Uh, some of the topics that we've done, we have Concrete Basics, or a three-part Concrete Fundamentals course. Um, there are companies that have come to us and purchased those courses to train, say, a salesperson that doesn't really, doesn't really have to be an expert in concrete, but he's selling something related to concrete, and you'd like to be him out, have him out there 
not not talking about cement sidewalks and cement driveways. Um, the basics is really, you know, these are the ingredients that go into concrete. Uh, the difference between cement and concrete. Fundamentals get in gets into you know the ways it's placed, the ways it's mixed, uh, different different special types of concrete. Um, we also do training for ACI certification, the field tech and the strength test or strength testing technician. Uh, the rest are more um, engineering, I'd say, related. The, the one on uh, testing of self-consolidating concrete. Uh, we have fiber reinforced concrete and sustainability courses, and one on uh, controlled low strength materials or flowable fill, as you call it. Uh, some of the future plans that we have. Um, we're planning to consolidate our online CEU program and our e-learning program. Uh, those programs are just because of the way they were developed. They're kind of handled in different systems. It makes it kind of confusing for the user who comes to the, uh, the ACI site to tell which one he wants to get into. Uh, so we're going to combine those basically all into sort of an e-learning type of system, uh, getting a new learning management system so that we can uh, provide easier access to the courses. Right now it's a bit cum cumbersome. And it will also provide us with better uh, search utility. So uh, our e-learning courses will come up in a general search on the course more often. Uh, we're also looking at doing more webinar content. Um, we can use recordings of portions of the webinars as clips in, say, a, an e-learning course uh, because, you know, we can use that as one of the formats we have. And that gives a little bit of variety to our course, so it's, it's not all reading or, or all listening to something. Uh, you know, we can kind of mix it up for the user. Okay. And then, uh, um, let's see, and then increased portability. Uh, trying to get things that play on uh, the, you know, the uh, laptop, or not laptops, tablet devices, smartphones. And I think that's going to bring about more of what they call chunking, which is when you, you put the ideas, the, uh, the, the material into smaller and smaller chunks because people are watching these things on the road, uh, don't have time to sit through a one-hour lecture. So uh, 